it's such a basic way of making but it's so flexible and you can create such complex forms as well as simple forms. Coiling was really how I was able to build form. It was slow, it was controlled. There's something quite primitive about it as well, I suppose. I mean, coiled pottery is it's one of the oldest forms of ceramic making. For me, it's still important that I use techniques and materials that have been around for millennia, particularly in this 21st century where it's all becoming so digital and so streamlined and technical. I like the idea that I'm returning and still maintaining techniques and materials that have been used for that long, that they still have something to offer. And that's why I work with the vessel, because the vessel is a very great symbol of civilization. The glazes that I'm using now, I've been using for about 12 years. They've evolved, I've adapted them. I still don't know exactly what I'm gonna get every time I use them. But because I layer different glazes on top of each other, which shouldn't necessarily be layered on top of each other because of the way that they react with each other, it's always interesting. It keeps me fresh with it. I mean, I have an idea of what I want from the glaze. I would be disappointed if it came out exactly how I thought every time. I like the unpredictable. I like the idea of working in partnership with the material, partly in a chaotic way, that it will bring something itself to the work, that I'm nodding total control. The texture appears as I'm painting the glaze on, so I'm discovering the nature of glazes as I'm using them. The contact my hand has with the brush and the contact the brush has with the surface and the way that the, the glaze is then moved from one to the other, there's a great connection there, which means that I can be expressive in the way that I apply the glazes. But as we've seen, the way that the glaze responds means that it has its own voice and it will create surface detail in the way that it is natural to it. I select key ingredients which will respond and react in a certain way under those conditions within the kiln. So silicon carbide will release a gas that will bubble and blister. Magnesium carbonate will shrink and crack. Cryolite will go crazy and do other things. The use of those key ingredients will go some way to me being able to express what I want, but because of the, the volatile nature of them, they then do their own thing. The glazes do respond to how much I've put onto the brush, how thickly I apply it to the, the surface of the pot, and the temperature that I fire the kiln to. They do respond, and if they don't respond in the way that I like, I'll put more glaze on and put them back in the kiln. Because I make the glazes myself, I'm familiar with all the different powders and ingredients and materials. My favourite ones are the silicon carbide the magnesium carbonate and the cryolite because they do their own thing. They create the chaos within the environment. They affect other materials. They kick against what I put in place for them. And that's the partnership. It's that they speak as much as me. I'm trying to reconnect us to nature. But I think in a positive way, hopefully optimistic way that says these are signs of life. I think that because the forms are so orderly and assertive, there is that balance of order and disorder as well. The chaotic surface on the very orderly form. I think the work needs closer inspection. They're not easy pieces to get immediately because they're quite complex surfaces, subtle, often dark tones in colour, so they, you know, they don't sing and dance in front of you. Uh, I think you have to be willing to invest a bit of time to look at them and to see just what's going on within that surface. The way that I look through my life is in detail. I look in the gutters, I look at the cracks on the walls, I look at the trees. What I'm trying to encourage is a closer inspection by everybody. You know, take a closer look at everything because you never know what it's going to reveal to you. You never know what you'll see.